Hej och välkomna till Popso. I kväll så ska det bland annat bli en konsert med svenska Weeping Willows. Men först så ska det handla om ett av de mest legendariska banden genom tiderna. Nämligen Kraftverk från Düsseldorf i Tyskland. Och jag är beredd att påstå att om det inte vore för Kraftverk så hade varken teknon eller hiphopen låtit som ni gör idag. Men så är de ju också ett av de mest mytomspunna banden. Ja, kärnmedlemmarna är otroligt svåra att få tag på. De har varken telefon eller fax. Och de har inte gjort någon tv-intervju på över 20 år. Men vi här på Popso, vi är såklart inte de som ger oss i första taget. Och vår reporter Malik Benjilul åkte ner till Düsseldorf i Tyskland i jakten på kraft. We had this concept reducing things rather than blowing things up. Reducing to the to the core. What is interesting to talk about? What is interesting to talk about which is unusual to normal boy meets girl themes, you know? We rather discover music as pictograms. Very simple motives like don't smoke. This is hot. This is verboten. Verboten to go on red. This was also the fields where we went to the restaurants in the evenings after after Kraftwerk. Here on the Ortsstraße there had been some restaurants and an ice cream uh, shop was the famous Palantini over there in the Graf Adolfstraße. And uh, a parallel Straße is the Königsallee with a famous Café Bittner where we always had breakfast, you know. We were living in the uh, British occupied zone and we were dominated by English and American radio, basically. And we had to find our own identity. So we had this famous German uh, movie artist, uh, Rainer Werner Fassbinder, director, and he did, um, he did the movie to the Bundesrepublik, Josef Beuys, making the art. And we felt we should make a statement how this Bundesrepublik, this Deutschland, would sound. We were listening to Stockholm. He's one of the, the, the biggest uh, influences. I also think that Kraftwerk makes a very interesting music. The drive for unusual forms and surprise. So this aspect of openness of the young character is what I like. Ja, Kraftwerk är ju den, det är den stora inspiratören för min del, så att säga, som, är, som bara får lov att bli en inspiratör. För man kan aldrig göra, man kan aldrig göra om det de har gjort liksom, en gång till, men man kan, man kan vinka lite till dem ibland och sen ibland kan man bara ha dem i hjärtat. I love Kraftwerk. Um, I mean, certainly some of Kraftwerks albums are some of my all-time favorite albums, you know, like Man Machine and Computer World. I think those are remarkable, wonderful records. They found the way to make uh, musical machines and actually were proud of it. They won't try to hide it. I think Kraftwerk's music is very uh, cold, but it's also very, very warm. And I think they reached a very uh, interesting balance that hadn't been reached before between the two. Kraftwerk bildades 1969 av två musikstudenter, Ralf Hütter och Florian Schneider. Efter några år anslöt sig Karl Bartos och Wolfgang Flyr, men efter ett drygt decennium och sex skivor tillsammans lämnade Karl och Wolfgang Kraftwerk. Det är nu 16 år sedan, och sedan dess har bara en enda ny låt lämnat Klinklangstudions väggar. Have you tried to contact them anyway? I have through the record company. I don't know how. And what did they tell you? They didn't tell me anything. They didn't give an answer. Mm, I thought so. My friend asked me today, why does he not ask Ralf and Florian? I said, he won't get in contact to them. They are still working in Kling Kling studio? Yes, I'm sure. I, at the moment they are pretty often in the studio. I sometimes see them from, from the distance when I come through the uh, Graf Adolfstraße on the Mintrop Platz. And friends of mine tell me sometimes so that there is something going on. How, to, how do you contact into the studio? You can't. You can't. There is, a, there is any ring from them with no name is to ring inside, but they have always video uh, watched you, you know. Vi vet alltså så här mycket att det här är Klingklangstudion någonstans i det här gula huset här, men jag vet inte riktigt var. Alltså, 
kraft och exkundmedlemmar och får frågan om jag inte gjort någon tv-intervju på väldigt många år. Men nu är vi alltså här utanför så då borde du kanske. Här har vi då inte klingklangstudion. The Klingklang Studio in Düsseldorf, close to the uh, railway station. We met. We made jokes. Who has the best joke today? And we met during the afternoon, like maybe six o'clock, five o'clock. It gets late. It got later and later and later after. <laughs> What I didn't like all these years that we always met late and worked until the early morning, you know. Because I'm a day man, I'm not a night man. Who in Kraftwerk was the night person? Ralf more, most. Ralf most, yes, absolutely. When I sometimes visited him in his house at three o'clock in the afternoon, he made breakfast just, you know, he was just in his, in his uh, sleeping robe, you know. <laughs> so Ralph was the person you had to adjust yourself to. He was the leader. Absolutely. Uh, even if they always tell it's Ralf and Florian, but I think Ralf is the most intellectual one and he, he had the last word mostly. Melody making, lyric making and theme finding, that was mostly Ralf and Florian. He was mostly into the technical things, absolutely. He brought the first vocoder into our studio. It was a military device. And Karl later, he was more and more slowly by slowly involved into uh, music and melody making as well. And I, I had two fields, drumming and design making. I made uh, most of uh, the, the stage sets and the devices. And when I met Ralf and Florian, uh, they had some electronic things, not too much at that time, just three or four electronic things. And Ralf owned already his first Minimook. That was the great release for me when I saw, when I heard and listened to the Minimook. It was just this fat sound of the ring modulators, you know. If you take a guitar, it's always the same. You just can make it more bloom, 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 like in the mid age, or you can make brang, 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 like Mr. Uh, Townsend does, maybe, you know. But if you tune the volumes and the filters and uh, the LFOs, you, you can bring millions of sounds out of it. It's incredible, you know. The rumble. A motor car. Yeah. Aha. No, I don't recognize this. It's Kraftwerk. Autobahn, yeah, yeah. The press, they laughed at us. They, they, they told us a crazy Knöpfchendreher. You know what a Knöpfchendreher is? Someone who is a bit weird in his mind. And, you know, let him, let him do. There comes nothing out of it. But he's nice, but not important. It was too new. Autobahn was a, went to number three in America. It was, let's say, a white, white audience. College kids liked it, the strange sound and electronics, and Autobahn, Autobahn, driving on the Autobahn. Kraftwerk war genau die Musik für uns. Da war ich so 20, 25 Jahre war das die Musik gewesen. Zum Beispiel dieser Begriff Autobahn, man war frei, man konnte sich mit dem Käfer auf die Autobahn hängen und dann Autobahn, dann, 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 immer den Mittelstreifen. Das haben die also unheimlich gut toll getroffen. The radioactivity was very different. Uh, what only a, a, a few people know is that it had nothing to do with the radioactivity as radium. It had something to do with the activities of the radio companies in America. We were at the billboard during this first America tour, and there was one, one line, radioactivity, and it meant uh, the airplay. So we thought about this, how, how it, it really makes sense in German, radioactivity, radioactivität. That was a steam. Suddenly it was in their brains when we had been on the back flight. I, I heard Ralf and Florian or Ralf and Karl. No, no, Ralf and Emil speaking about radioactivity is in the air for you and me. Radioactivity. 
So this is Berger Alley, by the way. Die Berger Allee Nummer 9. Und in the end is our flat where we used to live together for 10 years from 73 until 83. This is it, number 9. I lived on the left side and Emil lived on lived on the on the right in the right room, you know. Carl was in the back side, which is very far away on the other side of the house. From this window I could see the Rhine. And all the ships. Uh, I loved that place. Vi befinner oss just nu på järnvägstationen i Düsseldorf. Här gick på 70-talet den transeuropeiska expressen, ett tåg som blev inspiration och tema till Kraftwerks sjätte skiva, Trans Europe Express. This sleeve was done for the American market. Was that taken like one picture? No, there, there is, it's a combination. It's four, four pictures actually and retouched. Because if you see the perspective is different, Florian, his head is much bigger than ours. <laughs> And this one is retouched also. This is typical Germany. This is supposed to be given an impression of uh, a German string quartet. And this is the River Rhine here, supposed to be a very German environment. Trans Europe Express. Trans the idea about Express. Trans Europe Express was rather to express our German identity. We, wa we wanted to incorporate the idea of Europe. And it's a funk rhythm. Very, and, and we like the idea of incorporating this word trance. So it was very funky then. Trance Europe Express. Express. This is my uh, f uh, favorite album anyway. It's because of its romantic melodies. It's a part of me. This is was this was one of the most uh, reasons why I entered Kraftwerk because there was something inside of me which touched my heart. The press, the media, they. To me, the media is like a mirror. And if you read like NME or newspaper, they tell you what you are, <laughs> in a way. And people keep on telling us, or, or kept telling us, uh, they are like robots. They're acting like robots. They don't move, they are showroom dummies. They are robots, they are, they are themselves, they are machines. So we thought, okay, if they consider us as machines. So try, let's make songs about the um, connection between man and machine. We had to look like it, like it sounded, you know. If you if you think that big and huge American rock circus, how they appeared on stage with jeans on, with holes inside, long hair, drinking lots of uh, whiskey and, and beer before, it's a, a macho field with macho movings, and we didn't want that, you know. We all are, in our personalities, a part of. Uh, we have feminine attitudes, every one of us, I think. And this was good for us because it kept us more, a little more elegant. We wanted that elegant style. She's a model and she's looking good. I'd like to take her home, that's understood. We go to the Nordrhein-Westfalen Forum. This is a museum of modern art where they show special exhibitions. And now it is the 
Anton Corbijn exhibition, a photographer from Netherlands, who made some very nice uh, photos of pop arts from all over the world. They also, they show also me. Was sind die Verwandten von der Gruppe Kraftwerk? Jetzt bin ich mit der jungen Frau und ihm hier. Wir wollen nur kurz mich vor meinem eigenen Bild da Dann sind wir auch schon wieder weg. There are lots of people I know. Isabella Rossellini. Miss Foster. This is Carl with his Mr. Spock's haircut. Raumschiff Enterprise, Mr. Spock with a thin ear and this haircut. Life looks so sad. Why does he look so sad? And you? The first. It's not my own face, it's the face of the dolls. Who said he was the dolls? I don't know. One word gives the other and suddenly it appears the idea. Why don't we take dolls instead of us? From that date we were not needed anymore. There are huge differences. There are huge differences between him and me. And that time I had a nice face, today I have more in my brain. I was so childish then. But I re remember the time I liked everything with Kraftwerk then. had been uh, playing in Venice, then we put the dolls in the, uh, the audience. The dolls were sitting in the audience and we were playing and they watched us. Yes, that was a good idea. And you know, the funniest thing about that, it was in the first row and it was in the, in, in the Venice hall where they normally do the, the, uh, the film days there, you know, the Biennale. So there was a very, very famous and, and a very, very expensive audience. And you know what the first row costs on the places? We had to pay for these first four places for the dolls afterwards. And this was crazy expensive. If you have a, a strong theme developed, in the beginning from, from autobahn or radio activity, all these themes were already there at once Be because we knew we are doing the soundtrack of the information society. After Man Machine we had Computer World. It was also very easy to progress from Man Machine to Computer World because we were aware that this is going to change the society completely again, the electronic revolution. But by the time we did Computer World we hadn't got one computer in the studio. We had to go to IBM to look at computers. Eins, zwei, drei. Rock, Bonus Beats. They ripped my beat off. Bloody bastards. Well, this, this guy, Africa Bambata, he took the melody from Trans Europe Express and combined it with the beat of uh, Computer World and Numbers and with some rap vocal style. And he claimed this is the beginning of hip hop. I didn't know what was going on then. I didn't know that they used samples because we had no sampler in that time in Düsseldorf or in Germany. So later on, I didn't like it. I really disliked it at first. Oh, I have to go here. I disliked it and today I think a bit different. Because otherwise it helped very good to get a Kraftwerk into the public ear in America, much more than Autobahn, you know. Kraftwerk were the biggest influence ever on me. The first album that I actually bought for myself was Autobahn. And the original Autobahn cover is the German Autobahn sign. And that had a really, really, really profound effect on me. I think in terms of electronic music, I mean, Kraftwerk were by far the most um, influential band. I mean, I, you, you can't really think of like any electronic band that, that, that isn't in debt to them in some way whatsoever. The Man Machine and then the computer album was seen from my side today was, was nearly the finish, was nearly the end of Kraftwerk. Seen from my side, it was um, the headline, both albums, I think, the headline of Kraftwerk. And afterwards, Ralph and Florian were much more uh, involved into their cycling and 
then it took years to go to the next album. I remember Florian was the first one who came with a, with a really cool biking race, all metallic. And so it looked so beautiful, then we all bought one. And we won, went on biking and uh, we stuck to it. The bicycle, that's, that's the ultimate man machine in a minute. Yes. After the man machine, you started to record it a little bit slower. Oh, not a little bit slower, man. That was very, very slow. That was years for, of nothing, you know. And you can listen what came out of it. The last album, which was only called Coffee, as I say. It, it got slower and slower. For a certain amount of time, we lost track to creativity and kept on concentrating on technology. And that was the main mistake. So, and in the end, I had to um, make a little adjustments and, and leave this, this band. Ralph and Florian. They are crazy. Crazy, very uh, outstanding personalities. They were founding the band. And, and I, I was like the youngest. I'm the youngest, so I'm always little, little color. It changed. I was more bossier in the end, and uh, but you know, I had to leave then in the end because your your elder brothers they never would allow you to come up with uh, leading ideas. I saw Florian yesterday, by the way. I had been in an electronic shop here, a new one, and went out and just, just suddenly we went parallel. He with his little daughter, and we, I think we looked at each other for a second or so, and then. He took his daughter, went on the other side of the street. He was afraid to see me. As a, as a, as I said to myself, poor boy, you could have said a good talk. Maybe just good talk. Hello, is this Heidi Wellen? Yes, it is. I would like to speak to the person who has the contact with Kraftwerk. To be honest, nobody has contact. Really? Really. I'm very, very honest with you, but that is Kraftwerk. You can't, can't compile them with any other band. Can you make a phone call to the Kling Klang studio? Nope. They're not, they're not using their phone. They have no phone. Could you write them a letter? Yes, but you will get no answer. But if you really, really need to come in contact with them, how do you do? Uh, to get in contact with them, uh, with them some of our company uh, drove to Düsseldorf and uh, 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 waited in front of the studio. And good luck, they, they arrived the same day. Or at least Ralph arrived the same day. Otherwise, maybe he will stand there till today. So, here we are. I have gone millions of miles of times, I think, through that door, which goes, if you open it with a special knack, it starts, you know, I have it already stored in my brain. I should sample this knack once and put it into another song, I thought, I thought so, you know. No, it's closed. Kling Klang is not working. Don't you think Ralf and Florian is there right now? No. Why? It's too I'm... early. They, they uh, work in the evening always. But tonight you think they will be there? Yes. This is the one. This is where you have to ring. There is the, the number to traffic. Is it crazy? If, if I listen, I, I don't listen, but if I listen and I'm I hearing an old song like Radioactivity, it sounds so romantic to me. It's just so, so human. If you consider it to, to techno, techno music, which it sounds really staccato, inhuman. And this old Kraftwerk music is so human. bandet sitt första